Can the A20 heart be beaten? If you've picked up Brimstone after this run, you'll think it looks easier. Who are we fighting? Guardian, who I think is one of the harder bosses for uh, Ironclad. Definitely. Early shop says gold would be good, but there's no gold. Got choose a card, common relic, transform two for 18 damage, or the boss swap. This is a boss swappable situation for sure. I like showing off the boss swaps on Clad. Let's do a boss swap. I think I would normally pick a common relic here, but I'm going to give up the burning blood and say I want extra energy during boss and elite fights instead. No additional energy during regular fights, which definitely means we're going to uh, lose hit points quickly in those combats. But the elites and bosses should be much better. I wonder if we ever go three elites like this. Hmm. Let's think about that. I don't want to fight too many combats because we're going to be bad at those. Will I still boss swap on higher streak? I will be more hesitant to do so because I would be afraid of the low roll starts or busted crown in particular, which can totally ruin a, a large streak if you get a Busted Crown swap. It, not that it's unwinnable, but it might be. Uh, let's start here. I don't mind going to an early shop. I am a little afraid of Jawworm. Only a little bit, though. Is this Bash Defend? Never Bash Strike. I would like the opportunity to play three strikes with Bolt next turn. Let's do Bash Defend. Take seven here. Only two strikes, but I am glad for the vulnerable. And then this could go badly from here. Please buff again next turn. Bummer. Uh, yeah, let's go double defend again. Do one. Okay, now we can triple defend and we still won't kill. That's really unfortunate. I can kill if I play one strike. I feel like we're due for a buff. I'm getting chipped away here, though. Definitely a disastrous jawworm fight. That's how it goes sometimes. Actually, it has nothing to do with the caller, mind you. We would just have 54 health here. Happy for a twin strike. It's all because we missed the third strike draw on turn two. That that went so badly. And I missed a couple 50-50s as well. Let's fill the potion slots. That's what I meant for the shop to do. That means we can do something else. I could pay 10 more gold for another potion. Um, but I actually do think I want that 10 gold to get us over uh, like a rare... 30 gold would put us to 84, so maybe 90-ish. Yeah, that would let us buy a high roll on sale rare. Or a good potion. Although I wouldn't likely want a good potion. We get two decent potions, the Elixir and the Liquid Memories. Var... The Furks, excuse me, thanks for the 11 months of support. Go double defend here. We're gonna Twin Strike, we're gonna defend, and we're gonna... Let's see, you spat web next turn. You could attack next turn. We need to take this one? I really doubt it. It seems like at most we take one next turn. Yeah. So this is the one I would have taken anyway. That was better. Searing Blow is here. Uh, I don't think we get enough rest sites for that to be a viable, or even remotely. 
Armaments, I suppose, is A-OK. -okay. Um, I have put more love towards Iron Wave. For being 5 block, 5 damage early. I do like it against Guardian, especially as an attack card. Okay, let's try an Iron Wave. I like this more going into the Elites than I like the Armaments, for the most part. Although, Liquid Memories with Armaments becomes a little bit better. Also, especially if I'm going into Elites without any upgrades, Armaments is a bit better. Ozma Glacius, thanks for the four months. For grabbing Searing Blow Act 1, I'd say you need at least four bonfires for it to be good. Five is preferred. And then you're sort of hoping for an upgrade from an event as well to really get ahead of the curve. Pretty hard to get all that to happen. But if you have at least four fires, you can you can make this work. More often than not, I've found. It's actually quite a tough choice here, Iron Waver Arma. Wing Boots also makes Searing Blow exceptional. It's, it's really rare to get both Wing Boots and then be offered a Searing Blow early, but holy moly, it's good. Actually, specifically with these two potions, I like armaments for the first elite. Let's let's do an armor here. Although I'm picking the skill pot, right? It's good with that too. All right, what's the shop got? We have 100 gold. Oh, oh my! I'm gonna do that. That seems good. Although discovery also very strong here. True grit also pretty good against the boss. But I mean, it's a floor one feed with well. Floor 4 feed with armaments. Extremely hard to say no to that. Seems just too good. I'll buy it. Yeah, lots of card rewards to deal with Guardian still. Lots. Now you show up, you stinky serpent. You're too stinky. Disagree. Remember what card I have stashed in the hole in a wall? I think it's a Ritual Dagger Plus. At least it was on the, the ladder save file. Real shame that never got used. But we've had some grand adventures since, so I don't regret it one bit. Classic. Hmm. Thinking if there's any skills that would really help here. Might be forced to use the feed for damage on this turn. I, I don't know that we can afford to be greedy here. There's already a fight we're doing kind of poorly in. Probably we want to skill potion next turn, not this turn. But I'm not sure. There's a little bit of card draw in there. Work it off. Um, Burning Pact. We'd be hoping for block mostly. There's also energy gain and trench. Exhume. Exhume's fun. Get our feedback. And we can actually block 18 on this turn regardless. I think I still want to use the skill potion on this turn to try to augment our turn somehow. Lame Barrier does 6 damage to each of them with the armaments and is a really good redraw. Burning Pack could give me some damage right now. I'll take the Flame Barrier. Upgrade it. Then the front one actually perishes. Oh, 
Oh, when we actually get this one. Nice. Close there. And we get the Flame Barrier Redraw on an attack turn, too. Lucky. Good first elite, for sure. Considering we had no upgraded cards. And we get a very good first relic, the Incense Burner. Intangibility every six turns is pretty spicy. If I just grab a Precautionary Evolve, this is something I've been teaching myself is a pretty good idea. Uh, although it's harder to take going into Guardian, who is a foe we have to respect. I actually don't think we can get away with it for that reason. No, I'll skip all this. Although this would let us take a power through. That's the main advantage at the moment. Mm -mm. Fatherbacks, thanks for the three months in the Prime sub, and Big Herbs, thanks for the Tier 1. I think we skip. Burner could let us tank the first hit of Guardian if we set it up, that's true. But there's still the other 17 turns of the Guardian fight, right? Well, we could be intangible for three of them at least. I'm going to skip these. Ooh, remove transform upgrade. Skip upgrade feed. Now that's greedy. Upgrade feed in this situation. Transform might also be greedy, though. Because, uh... We're really hoping to improve our damage here, and I think upgrading Twin Strike or Armaments, perhaps, is the better option. I could definitely get behind upgrading armaments, especially with four energy in the elite fights, because we can reasonably play armaments and then three other cards, and it's guaranteed to upgrade every other card. Even with Ascender's Bane in the deck, it's going to upgrade at minimum three cards. So yeah, let's upgrade armaments for the short term. And we can also use it with Liquid Memories for an even bigger impact. This is a great enemy. Speaking of Ascender's Bane... How do I evalu evaluate Evolve's upgrade? Plus one draw per status. So you kind of you kind of want to count how many statuses your deck creates before you can evaluate how good Evolve is as an upgrade. And if you don't make any of your own statuses, then you're looking at an upgrade that doesn't do anything in fights where you don't get. Status is added by the enemy. So I guess it's as good as the Evolve is in the first place. In a sense. Uh, I also evaluate it a lot less valuable um, because there's, there's an upper limit of your hand is entirely full. So the Evolve upgrade can also be bad if you have a ton of statuses because... If you draw seven statuses, even with an Evolve Minus, you're going to have a full hand. Um, or if you have Sneko Eye or something else that's drawing cards, you may also not need the additional draw. Let's see. So they started on one. This is turn two. Turn three, it wakes up no matter what I do. Turn four and five would be attacks. So we have to wake up right now if you want to take advantage of the incense is the thing here. That's actually not bad. We get to block a next turn, which is better than I can say if we bash strike. So I guess we're starting now is the conclusion here. I'm not too afraid of Lega with poor energy and burner setup. Oh, we don't even take that much. Good. But we do take this much. And this much is quite a bit. This might be where Liquid Memories on Bash becomes a good idea, because then I could Bash and play four attacks. Um, then we can follow up with damage next turn. 
Looks like we might not fight the burning elite. We can fight this elite, though. Let's do it. Could also liquid memories defend, but I think we need to make sure we have a win locked in for this fight. But my face, though. All right, we should be able to easily line up feet because we have burner plus intangible. Good. If we're lucky, we draw armaments, too. But uh, I don't think we will be lucky. We are, in fact, lucky. Delicious. We get a happy flower. We get a power potion. We get a true grit. Okay. These are all substantial improvements. In the short term. I don't even mind resting with a true grit. Get a relic, which is Lantern for even more energy. Actually quite like the Lantern Happy Flower because this is energy that we can use during non-boss, non-elite fights to not fall so far behind in those regular combats. That's quite good. Love them both together. Um, gives us reason to put Happy Flower on specifically 0 or 1 as well. Although more frequently, we'll be worried about the incense burner number. I can't try to set them both up. I'll go mad in the attempt. So no thank you. Not sure how many events or combats you want on the way to that fire. Oh, we can upgrade it indeed. Thank you, Cleric, for the healing. Now we're looking pretty good. We could upgrade True Grit, which I think is more important than, again, upgrading Feed. Especially with an upgraded True Grit, we can just stall as long as we need to, in most fights. I guess having the feed does mean we want at least one more regular combat. Let's take this. Hmm. Presumably we kill the small one, yes? Although realistically, that's going to be our feed target. Try this. Feel good about that. Burner on one for the next fight. Actually, a good reason to take one more fight before the elite. Unless I want to try to stall here. Set burner to a number for the elite. Kind of hard to do that. We just fought Lagavulins. We're fighting either Sentries or Gremlin Knob. For Gremlin Knob, we want burner on, oh, uh, on three, excuse me. For Sentries, we want it on two. Kind of helps having it on two for Gremlin as well. But we definitely want it on turn three for Gremlin. We're not that afraid of sentries, so maybe I just put it on three. But yes, that's all good reason to take another combat here. And just win right now. Let's do that. Get a potion. Get offered some mediocrity here. I'm a little worried about our damage scaling for Guardian, but I think armaments will cover that probably. To expand on what Faley said about Relic Order, there are some weird consequences as a result of how the relics are sorted. Um, for example, if you reroll a relic for any reason, uh, such as you're ineligible to find it, easiest example here is Bottled Tornado. Cannot drop if you don't have a power. So if you have no powers and the next relic in the list is Bottled Tornado, you get a different relic and you will not see Bottled Tornado again even though you never saw it in the first place.
Might have misspoke. Uh, we want Incense Burner to make us intangible on turn two of Sentries. Um, or have it set to four going into the Sentries fight. So that you block the double tens on that turn. Don't think we're taking Peace Strike, are we? Actually, that's a pretty good Peace Strike. Get in here. Of course. Welp. Realistically, when we want to kill that cultist, looks like we're going to be able to as well. So let's just go for it. Although the spike slime will likely attack for more next turn. Exactly. Um, we could actually kill the spike slime instead of the cultist. That would save four here. We can do perfected strike, strike, feed here. Then we still have Vuln for these strikes, although it won't kill. Um, we would only take... We'll draw double defense strikes. We play 10 block, take one, deal nine, leave it at 11 with a fresh draw. Could be pretty safe. Let's do that. And now Incense is on three with Happy Flower on turn one going into what could be Grum the Knob here. And that's perfect. Wow. Gotta say, this one's pretty easy for me, actually. We really have to respect the power of the Guardian. Uh, and that means we need Disarm here to slow down the Guardian's damage output in that boss fight. Reaper's kind of a hope and a prayer with four energy anyway. Although Reaper Feed is often a game-winning combo. Right now we just need an act-winning combo. So I'm going to take that Disarm. And we're going to upgrade... True Grit. And probably Disarm for Guardian. Yeah. Good news is we got Gremlin Knob and we want all the energy on turn one. That's a pretty good turn one. It's a really good turn one, actually. Like, to the point where we probably wanted Incense on a different number. But in a good way. In a good way. Let's see, our worst draw is... One strike. Yeah. But I can play both of these anyway. Never mind. I guess the answer is that uh, the incense burner didn't matter. At all. Cool. We get a letter opener rewarding us for playing skills and a zero cost skill to go with it. One of my favorites, of course, Battle Trance. Very good with armaments. Probably going to be my upgrade over the Disarm now. What's up, Wumbo? Thanks for two months. Yippee. Block pot over to Silt Chaos. I like the power potion quite a bit. does feel like we've almost oversolved the uh, Guardian fight. So I don't think I need to use this Power Potion. Although it might make life a bit easier.
so much energy. Five energy turns feel so good in Act 1. I actually don't want to delete any of these cards. Maybe I could have given up the uh, defend. Really just very clean fight. We even set up a uh, burner for act two. Cute. Tasty. We're offered a uh, Bludgeon, a Demon Form, or a Barricade. This is actually the sort of deck I could really see benefiting from a Barricade. Although the Demon Form is pretty good offensive scaling. Defensive scaling can be just as good. And a combination of good draw, good energy, and disarm to reduce enemy strength can really allow us to stack block very effectively. So, this is a situation where I see Barricade being a lot more tempting than Demon Form. The Incense Burner also makes the Barricade a lot more tempting. Did you know that I play games other than Slay the Spire? It's true. Catch me over on Baylor Lord Plays for card games, RPGs, strategy games, and more. Do I think the current challenge will be more difficult than the Mastery Challenge? I think so. I think so. We've already seen that uh, the game can choose to throw curveballs at you at any time stuff like that hexagos loss earlier today energy is the biggest barrier to enter to entry or you could call it the barricade to entry yes and we have ed energy in spades potentially more if i take this fusion hammer which is pretty takeable because of armaments here And Aura's Box always tempting, although our Strikes and Defends are actually doing good work currently. We've got Perfected Strike, we've got Armaments Barricade, we've got Letter Opener, so I like our Strikes and Defends just fine. And we've seen lots of bad P-Boxes to remind us why it's not always a good boss relic. Double Potions are kind of no-nonsense. Pretty good here, actually. I, I don't hate this Sacred Bark one bit. is a really good sacred bark but i think i want even more energy i'll take a fusion hammer let's do it so now we get to take lots of fights especially lots of elites Maybe go for this elite. Seems iffy. Something like this feels pretty good. Definitely not going far left, right? That's correct. Ah, what a nice turn to be intangible on. Feels good. Be back for you, feed.
And a good turn to have five energy on, as we can play the barricade and actually make a reasonable amount of block at the same time. Arma lines up with Disarm. Feels good. We could use the block potion now if we want to. It'll save three immediately, and we get to retain the other nine. Although I think this is enough block, right? Even with Frail, we'll get three, nine. Nine with Disarm plus. We'll full block anything that isn't the 21 again. And then we can use the block potion then, even if it is. So, yeah. It's fine. It is the 21. All right, fine. Rude. Oh, my three hit points back. Jerk. It's pretty sweet, though. With this setup, it's almost a matter of, of inevitability that we feed on each combat, and we can leave each fight with the incense burner set to our desired number as well. Which is pretty sweet. Incense on five, probably five. Although, actually, for the other act one easy pull fights, we're looking at chosen or baseball, right? So, for that, we'd want incense on three. Hmm, could be birds as well, but I mean, that incense doesn't really do anything either way. Just not turn one for birds. So, yeah, so setting it to turn one is the wrong number. Thieves, though, we would want it on turn one or turn two. Hmm. Sounds like our odds are best for turn three, though. So let's do turn three. We have no problem lining that up with the feed because we can shrink the deck to the point where we draw the whole deck every turn with the true grid. So we can always line this up without having to rely on randomness. Very satisfying. Flame barrier with barricade. Flame barricade deer. Yeah. And we can transform two cards. Or gain strength on turn one. I'm down to get rid of uh, two of our strikes at this point. What do you got? Wait. Those are awesome together, except... We're missing the strength to get started. Um, Exhume is just insane, though, with feed and disarm. You can do crazy stuff. Seems very good. Got to take one event more, guaranteed. Yes, yes. 
Surprise shop. Oh. <laughs> Will now. That is a mighty fortuitous brimstone, let me tell you. Definitely makes stalling for feet a lot harder, but we have a limit break. We have exhum. So that is really good. We also have uh, incense burner to help us negate the downsides of brimstone. Seems pretty good. D chain, thanks for the seven months. Yeah, did somebody say there's no strength? This is where the Reaper would have become amazing. Oh well. Um, if not going Brimstone, you could pick Finesse here and try to build an infinite with that. It's kind of hilarious. I really like this Brimstone. Can we go three for three with Brimstone? Let's find out. One of my favorite relics, personally, it is birds, of course. Well, yikes. The Birdstones. Meet the Birdstones. drink this. Flame barrier, save me from my own hubris. Free strength birds. But don't they know? It's swooping time. And flame barrier is here, actually, so perfect. The fools. The weaklings. I could exhume disarm. Bring this to two by six. That's not enough, though. Forget defend is better. Surely. Surely. Take two, and then we're immune. Look at that. We knew the right number. We totally knew the right number. Easy. Also, I want to eat two of them, right? That's what we want. Well, let's eat one of them. How about... They are kind of dangerous. All told, though, not not bad. Not that bad. Hmm. If I didn't already have a billion energy, I might like bloodletting. Dropkick would have formed the complete infinite. Would have been a bad infinite, though. Oh. And I'm not intangible turn one, you say. I guess we need to line up the kill on the parasite here. Could think about using the ancient potion. I'm not sure I want to use it right away. But we probably have to block next turn. We could kill the fungi beast immediately, but if I do that, I can't double feed. Let's do this. Not having Frail turned out to be important, at least. We still hold out hope. I think we need to use it. Limit break, twin strike, arm, uh, no. Exhume arma feed. 
We can do Exhume Armaments Twin Strike Feed. Is that enough? That'd be 14 twice. Yes, that'd be enough. There we go. And I might be able to set the burner a little bit higher here. Robot Daniil, thanks for the six months of support. Would really prefer to be intangible turn one here. Hopefully that helps. Anger normally okay. I'm not sure that it benefits us being zero cost with how much energy the deck has though. And agree with chat. Disarm is very good with Brimstone. It's one of the things that made taking the Brimstone here reasonably safe. Is Brimstone an event relic? No, it's a shop relic. It will only ever appear in the shop. How scary is Champ with Brimstone? Not that bad. The Brimstone naturally solves the problem that the Champ is, although, although you do, do need a little bit of initial survivability. Brimstone Book of Stabbing can be pretty spooky. Do I want to Power Potion now? I kind of do. I'm a little bit afraid of this book. Juggernaut's going to be good damage. Yeah, I'll take Juggernaut. That's Juggernaut plus, I'll have you know. And I'm going to play every card, including the feed, which we can exhume for the kill if we need to. Currently, we don't have the best of strength scaling methods, which makes things a little bit awkward. I cannot kill. We have 39 plus 24. No, that's not enough here. So we want to what? Defend, defend? Maybe only one defend. want to do enough damage to make sure it dies next turn. And I'm going to exhume the feed to give us a chance here. I think 20 is a little uncomfortable, but we have fusion hammers, so we get healing. This is perfectly fine. No feed, but I mean, we beat the Book of Stabbing. That's kind of important. Get a blue candle allowing us to play curse cards at the cost of one health. Not a big deal here. Not all that valuable either. None of those cards do much for us. But we do get to sleep for 30 HP, and I'll happily do that. The shop is no longer as valuable. I might not want to go there. We'll see what's in the uh, chest first, though. Knowing Skull. Oh, hello. That's going to be a very valuable shop indeed. <laughs> um, we have a lot of health here, so give me a potion. Thanks for that potion. Um, give me another one. All right, good potion. Give me some money. Give me some more money. 
Give me some more money. All right, we're done. Ooh, that's a good one. Enemies will have less health now, so that means we're way less likely to die in the elite that we're about to go to behind this shop. This is pretty good. Thread needle, guaranteed block every turn. Um, stacks with barricade is quite nice. Not that much else that's good here. Probably block potion is good. Dupe potion is good. Might just buy the relic, though. Boon could be cool with limit break, with disarm, with speed, but uh, I don't like Spoon that much with Exhum. Let's try this. Let's see what happens here. Oh, they're so small. I love them. How cute they are. Attack potion, save me. That definitely qualifies. Um, that's overkill, unfortunately. What about Wild Strike? Does the Wild Strike get me a feed here? See, with two strength, we have 14 plus 8 is 22. Plus speed is base 10 is 12. 34. No, we cannot feed with Wild Strike. Oh, well, I guess I'll just kill them all. Seems perfectly fine. Unless maybe there's something else I can do. What if I Flame Barrier? We leave the middle guy alive. Let's see. Seven times... One, two, three, four, five, six to kill. So it would have to be Defend Whirlwind. The middle guy lives, but then I can't play the feed. I could do feed. If I feed on one... And I Flame Barrier, Feed, Whirlwind. Lock 16, I would take one damage. But then I would be able to get that back by feeding. So that would be, we would deal 12. Plus 28, 40 damage. Yes, that can kill one. Kill this guy. Feed, Flame Barrier, Whirlwind. Okay, that's the way to do it. Do you see a good move? Look for a better one. Because now we can exhume the feed. Eat this man. We're up two health compared to simply winning the fight on turn one. Like a chump. Like a chump would. Probably I need that cleave, huh? Or body slam. Actually, wait, body slam. To body slam. I almost got blinded by the plus there. Blue candle omomori synergy? Could be. I think we're okay to take another elite here, maybe. Probably. Hopefully. Especially if we have a bag of preparation drawing us more cards on turn one. Actually, I'm confident we can take another elite. Suicidally confident. Don't you just love it? That's a pretty good turn one. Although I don't love the limit break being here. Do I want to skill potion on top of this nonsense? Next turn's going to be crap. So is the turn after next turn, is the problem here. Maybe I need to be able to exhume Limit Break. I mean, we gotta play Barricade at minimum. Barricade, Disarm, Limit Break. I can still True Grit. Actually, that's a good turn. We've retained quite a bit of block here. Not as much as if we had played, say, Flame Barrier, but we got some other important stuff done.
Does Bash Twin Strike Feed get a kill? Let's check that first. 16 plus 19 twice, plus 27. 16 plus 38 plus 27. is 81. That will not kill. But if I exhume Limit Break, it'd be 8 more strength. But then I'd only have 3 energy, so I could either do Bash Feed or Bash Twin Strike. Hmm... I could exhume Disarm? Bash, try to kill next turn. Or, oh yeah, 38. Hold on, wait. So that's 91. We still don't have a kill then. We could exhume the feet again. That's true. We can't get a kill with it this turn. Deeper problem. What did Camel Crush say? Have to reevaluate this turn. All good. So we either skill potion or we try to redraw. Not sure we have any particularly good options. I'm gonna skill potion. Given the situation. Alright, this can get us a feed. Perfect. Great suggestion, Camel Crush. Thank you. For suggesting the potion. We got an ice cream now, conserving our massive energy gain between turns. We get a pummel, destroying one enemy. Probably. We get a feed plus. Good box. You stinky snack. Make my barricade free. You hear me? Three, I tell you. Mm -hmm. Ominous. Actually, can we just kill you? That would be really convenient. Am I willing to misfeed for that? Yes. Yes, I am. Given the situation, Reaper is back. Seems too good to be true. That's pretty much all the pieces we need then. Max health, healing, block, and strength scaling. Very cool. What we didn't do is set up uh, Incense Burner correctly for this fight, but that's all right. We have Barricade. So I'm not too worried here. Just lose the perfected strike now. And I'm gonna bank an energy? I'm gonna bank an energy. I'd much rather exhume a card that isn't feed. So I'm going to try to not play feed in this fight. Limit Break and Reaper get stolen. Those are definitely not the worst cards to have stolen. Hmm, I could upgrade the Limit Break. Seems like a good idea. Then we can exhume something else. Reaper, perchance. chance. 
Scaling Body Slam with Strength is kind of cool. Let's try to get a kill. Looks like we can probably do that. We have Arma. We have Exhum. Might have Arma. We have Limit Break. Okay, even better. Um, all right. Nice. We leave the fight on full health. Once again, incense set up for next act. All intentional, of course. And we get a freaking Corruption, which I'll click because we have Barricade, Feel No Pain, Exhum. Make my skills free. See if I care. Even more energy via Coffee Dripper. Philosopher's Stone with Brimstone. Very spooky. Or we can Astrolabe three strikes away, getting three random cards. Feels hard to need any more energy here, with the ice cream especially. Who has the unseated A20 speedrun record? Speedrun.com would know. I, I feel like it's Ubla. But I might have the wrong category. Ubla. Actually, yeah, two strikes and perfected strike. For our transforms here. Uh, there it is. Burning Pact, good. Second Wind, good. Blood for Blood plus. Maybe okay. I like the other two. Burning Elite is here, so we don't have a lot of choice. Yeah, we don't have a lot of choice here. Um, could also go this way if we want to. Uh-oh. These guys can definitely be jerks. Mm -mm. Not being able to play Barricade and Corruption on turn one, slightly an issue. Although, only an issue for non-boss fights, huh? This will do Barricade... Second Wind. Body Slam. Exhuming Corruption would have been a cool play. Actually, even with 42 block built up. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Terrible. Oh. oh, no, we, we full blocked. It's fine. It's fine. Nobody panic. Not panicking, you're panicking. Onward. One orb walker. Shouldn't be that hard. Again with these. Hello? We don't need a uh, barricade in this fight, though. Corruption, feel no pain, will be sufficient. Or I could exhume it again. 
barricade this time. I'll exhume the Burning Pact. Yeah, I lied about Barricade being uh, not so good here. Bit of a bummer turn. Solivic Zoom? No, okay. Well, too bad. Can't stick around here. Heavy Blade. Yes. We want damage the scales multiple times with strength. And we don't care what it costs. And I'm not afraid of these nerds, although I really, really, really should be. Really should be. This can go really well or really badly. Indeed. Indeed. What if I had 8 strength on turn 1, though? I like that improves it a bit. Keep the barricade? Probably too late now. Lose it. It's pummeling time! Not quite. So close. At least we can feed now. Maybe. Yeah. That wasn't too bad. Put that under uh, really well. We score a shovel, which means we can dig at the fire instead of resting. Although we're only going to do that once or twice. Still pretty cool. Smoke Bomb is a thing. And I'll take a Warcry Plus, draw two, put a card on top. It's blocked with Feel No Pain, and it can set up feeds and stuff. Take another event. I want uh, Mind Bloom. There it is. Oh. I don't mind if I do, actually. I am rich. Can it really be this easy? And I am Orange Pellets. Offering Potion Belt. Discovery. Liquid Memories. Card Remove. I am all of those things. Can even get a backup barricade if we want. I actually really like the Ancient Tea Set here. Start combats after rest sites with two more energy. That'll apply to this elite, the time eater fight, and the shield and spear fights. Oh. We get to keep that energy with the ice cream. I'll take it. Very good set of cards and stuff. Probably want another speed potion too with orange with the uh, yeah with orange pellets. Orange pellets speed potion is OP. Let's go and change hexaghost happened to the streak. That's what. It was all Hexaghost's fault. We dug up two upgrades. That's kind of cool. Where's the money, Lebowski? What'd you do with it? And hey, look at that. The cursed uh, barricade corruption combo. Saved by Ancient T-Set here. to exhume the offering, actually. I don't want my turn to stop.
Seems like almost too much damage. Almost. Seems to be going well. Get even more dexterity for better blockification. If we want, we can add a bloodletting, but as before, it seems pretty difficult to want even more energy in this deck, so I'm just going to skip here. Uh-oh. We don't have Omomori to protect us. What now? What do we do? We play Barricade, of course. That's what we do. That's what we always do. Quote unquote. A limit break first. Play this one. Good. Bunch. Isn't bloodletting always good with ice cream? Only if you can eventually spend the energy. If you're already at saturation point, there will be no further benefit to more energy. I think we're either at or very close to that point. Overkill this thing because we're trying to feed, of course. Feed plus, ideally. And that we have achieved. Maybe. I might have just made a mistake, though. Nope, we have Reaper. Thank goodness Reaper does so little damage. Boy, am I glad. Um, Evolve seems pretty okay. Evolve will be another power with which to activate orange pellets and will give us card draw during the final few battles of the game. I think that's pretty helpful. Uh, we saw Evolve earlier, but it wasn't useful earlier. It's mostly useful here in the late game. So taking it before the late game is excessively costly, but taking it during the late game is great. That's what you want to do. My only attack is feed, but we can exhume it, right? So I'm going to play power, attack, skill to remove my debuffs here. Thanks to orange pellets, which as noted are OP. I managed to spend all that. Here we go. Tasty.
Current potions are better than that. Get another visit from the merchant offering us another disarm as well as a Dolly's Mirror to allow us to duplicate any card in the deck. Limit Break's a good one. Exhume works pretty well too here, actually. Maybe Exhume's even better than Limit Break as a dupe. Still no pain's okay, but yeah, it's gonna be either Limit Break or Exhume here. I think I want it to be the limit break. Go all in on damage. Don't have that much money, so let's save gold for the final shop so we can buy a premium relic of some kind, or maybe a really good potion. Although I doubt I need three speed potions. Will this run win? I wouldn't call it a guarantee, but this is a pretty secure run at the moment. That is good as good gets. I want some block next turn. I'll take the second wind. Only the one exhume. Okay, good turn one. worth playing. Great turn to be intangible. If I want upgraded, yeah, I do. One more disarm for the road then. More limit break for the road. Once again, thank goodness Reaper does so little damage. There we are. Get Duvu Doll, gain one strength. Flex Potion, which says gain five strength. We could take one of these, but I don't think we need any of them. Here we can multiple feed if we want to, slash if we line up the correct stuff. Easier said than done sometimes. Also sometimes requires the enemies to cooperate. They aren't always willing to do, like exploders, for example. Bonk you now. Wait, that's too much damage. Heck. Perfect. Okay, no need to change that. I make it look easy, Thorgear, but it's a surprisingly tough game, especially one to, uh, to flex on, so to speak. Very tough game. Okay. 
Thank goodness Reaper does so little damage. Don't need none of these. All right. One more fight. Another potential double feed. Again, should be easy to do here. Very easy. Just need to find the feed. Hello, feed. Are you there? It's not there. Feed was not there. Okay, could land feed here. No reason not to do a double upgraded feed, though, right? We have barricade and everything else down already. So... Let's do that. Delicious. Sentinel, always good with the corruption type decks. Even better with the ice cream, right? I'll take that. And we got a recall. Can't dig here. Upwards and onwards. That's what I say. Terrifying. Who told you you could do that? Please stop it immediately. Uh, we don't need upgraded feed in this fight. Need to win. Bonk. Very clever. Have you considered Sword Boomerang? Zoom armaments, potentially. Seems unlikely. And if I can get a feed now, I'm just going to do it. Nope. Fair enough, then. Delicious. And nutritious. For the second boss fight, we definitely want to be careful with the incense burner here. We need to make sure that incense is set to four. 
so that we can stop the shield and spear multi-stab that occurs on turn two. Uh, otherwise, we're going to be facing down 12 by 4. Normally, it's 10 by 4, but with uh, Brimstone, it'll be 12 by 4 damage with two burns on top of the deck. That'd be very bad. Though we have to be quite careful about that. I'm going to play Corruption. Still no pain seems worth it, though. Assuming speed is a bad idea. to play Barricade on that turn? Eh, maybe I did. I guess headbutt armaments so that I can armor the feed? Sure. worth playing just to avoid drawing it again. Even if it does give the Awakened Ones strength, so what? They're getting strength anyway. Got heavy blading to do. Can't headbutt heavy blade, though. Hmm. Oh well. Again, incense on four is the goal for the win here. Seems tough to win next turn, but we can try. Could even be worth investing a potion into, potentially. Liquid Memories would potentially do it. Because we could Liquid Memories, the Heavy Blade, specifically. Let's see here. Just play a lot of cards. Okay, hold on. We can do Arma, Feel No Pain, Corruption, Barricade, Bash. And now I can draw cards again, so let's Burning Pact. Let's Twin Strike first so I can redraw the Twin Strike. That kills. Let's just kill now, because Incense on 4 is much more important than anything else we can do. Excellent. To thump, to thump, to thump, a deep pulsing dread could be felt throughout the room. Is this the heart of the spire, the source of yet another brimstone win? Deal 2401 damage to the heart. And we get to dig up one more relic also. The hourglass will deal three damage per turn. To every foe doesn't sound like much, but maybe it's something. Entrench is pretty good. We could, f in fact, get a third speed potion. Could remove a card? Question mark. Fantasy for the speed potions? No need. We've got orange pellets. No need. 
Thinking about a headbutt with Entrench. We're just going to be able to outblock the... Uh... Let's do it. Or we could exhume the Entrench also with Corruption. I'm just going to remove a card. Blood for blood, you're out. Easy. Just casually block one million damage on turn one. It's a really good exhum, but I'm going to take the fire breathing so that I can do this. Guaranteed. Turns out we got corruption anyway. That's fine, too. Oops. Order. Ah. I'm just silly. I needed to play the Reaper there. Get ahead of myself. It's all good, though. We're immune to all damage on this turn. So I'll just buff up. Pretty good. We do take some damage, but nothing Reaper can't fix. I have wanted to wait one more turn for Incense Burner, but turn three will be good enough. Um, that'll block the turn three hit from the heart, which is either going to be the big hit or it's going to be a super powered brimstone multi hit. In either case, we're going to be pretty happy about that. And Nib's good too. Pretty sure we're just going to dominate the heart fight, although it depends a little bit on the draw order. We'll grab the headbutt as it might be used on Entrench, perhaps. Or Battle Trance, or a few other things. Really good turn one. We get to upgrade Feel No Pain. We get to upgrade Offering. Uh, and we get to activate all of the potions here. It's missing Barricade, of course. Wait, we can do... Okay, we can do something really cool here. Which is... We're gonna go defend... Battle Trance. Headbutt Battle Trance. Can battle trends again. Although hand space is becoming a bit of an issue here. Definitely want to play the evolve. Probably play one of the disarms also. We can put corruption on top so that we have a guaranteed power. Let's do evolve, disarm, disarm. Spectacular turn one. We have 16 strength, 11 dexterity, 160 hit points. And we're going to be intangible for the multi-hit, which actually ended up being kind of bad. Oh well. Uh, we could Liquid Memories now. Not the worst idea. With Liquid Memories, probably Burning Pact. Maybe Battle Trance. Just Burning Pact is fine.
Ready to corruption yet? Yes, I am. Well, that's quite a draw. Seems pretty good. Just being intangible on this turn wasn't so important. Oh well. There it goes. Double your block. Just for fun. Looks like we're very decisively there. Only now does the heart do 90 damage. That's way, way too late. GG. 488 damage to the face. GG! If you enjoyed that video, watch this one next. And don't forget to check out Baylor Lord Plays for variety content. Click the blue Baylor icon to subscribe.